There we go. We are live. Hey there, Facebook. Good to see you all this evening. I hope you've had a fantastic day, man. Mm. Today is September 12th. Uh, it's Saturday, and um, this is a site. If this is your first time joining us, welcome. It's great to have you with us. My name is Mick Shriver. I, uh, I'm an Episcopal priest. I serve two parishes here in Ludington, Michigan. If you've never been here before, man, you need to plan a vacation. It is beautiful. I'm lucky enough to call be called here as a as a priest serving two two parishes here in Ludington for the past seven years. And uh, the first is Emmanuel Lutheran, and the second is Grace Episcopal. And every night at nine o'clock, we gather together, and people from both of the parishes, as well as people all across the country, we gather together and we have a time of prayer together. We read a devotion. We pray for some people who've asked us to pray for them. We read a little scripture together. And we check in on each other's day. And more times than not, we share an adult beverage together. And such is the night tonight as it is Saturday, which means college football in the fall. And I'm about to leave this broadcast and I'm going to go upstairs and I'm going to watch some TV tonight, watch some football. But before I do that, we are going to have together. Oh, let me get it in the shot here. Basil Hayden's Kentucky Straight Bourbon Whiskey tonight. This was a gift from a friend of my daughter's. Her name is Cheyenne. Excuse me. My daughter's name is Selena. Her friend's name is Cheyenne. And I understand Cheyenne may be leaving soon for boot camp. So God bless her and prayers for her. But she gifted me with this. This is her favorite bourbon. And she found out that I enjoy a glass every once in a while. I go back and forth between bourbon and Irish whiskey. I am having a drink like this. You guys all know my beer preference, of course, is Yingling, being a Pennsylvania boy. Um, but tonight, we're going to do bourbon. After this broadcast, I'm going to take this glass. And this here cigar, it's a Hoya Red, a Nicaraguan, which was a gift from my commander at the Legion. And I'm going to be on the back deck and uh, watch some football and, well, just relax. Ah, here we go. Mm. So smooth. Oh, man. It is very, very good. Salute. Mm. Mm -mm. But before we get into that, go to that excuse me why don't we go ahead and check in on our day all right oh man i've had a had a very restful day actually um i was hoping it wasn't going to rain today because we were going to get some work done on the uh playhouse slash cottage um but it did rain a fairly good part of the day not a heavy rain at all just a just a constant uh not constant but intermittent showers all day long just kept everything wet good and wet all day so Paula and I decided to go into uh, Home Depot and get some supplies that we were going to need to start finishing off or start working on the inside. We're going to run electric to it. We're not going to insulate it. Uh, we've decided not to do that. Uh, but we are going to go ahead and um, finish off the inside. We're going to run electric inside. And, well, so we bought some supplies that we were going to need there. Okay? So we're prepping our way. Uh, okay? Unlike our, uh, my normal way of doing things is just tackle something and then pick up what I need along the way causing me to make several trips to Home Depot along the way <laughs> so that was my day I hope you guys had a fun Saturday today was the youth hunt also here in Michigan this weekend is a, a youth hunt um, the state DNR has uh, created a weekend prior to the start of archery season so that the youth can go out and have their first shot, um, as it were, um, of harvesting a deer here in Michigan. And it's in hopes of attracting more youth to the outdoor sports and especially to hunting. So this weekend, if you've heard some shots around, that's what was going on, okay? All right, so let's check in the room, see who's all here with us. Oh, looks like my screen locked up a little bit. There we go. Uh, so we got Chris Simpler. Chris and his wife Jenna are here and uh, in the room with us. It's great to see you guys. It's 
Very great to see you guys. Kelly Rivera is here. She is watching from Houston. Good to see you, Kelly. Uh, D Falk is with us and probably sitting right there next to Kid Dynamite, too. Uh, Kathy I. Teen. Ah, the I Beams. It looked like you guys were out at the lake house today. When I saw a post, I think it was from today, you guys were bean soup in a uh, in a Dutch oven, hanging it over a, a, a charcoal-based fire, or no, a wood fire. Uh, it did not look, however, like the Dutch oven was big enough um, to share the abundance of bean soup with those that you know and love, you know, like your favorite pastor. Um, just saying. It looked like a kind of smaller pot, but, you know, that's okay, as long as there's some. <laughs> Oh, man. Let's see. Who else is here? Oh, Frank Cayley. Frank, we're going to talk about you a little bit later on, man. Thank you very much for sharing your story about this young man, Kyle. We're going to be praying for him. And I'm going to be of what you shared with me. Um, thank you. Thank you for that, man. Sharon Welton is here watching right from here in Ludington. Very good to see you. Chris says, greetings from Chicago. Ludington bound tomorrow. There you go. So they're down in Chicago right now, and uh, it's great to have you guys here. Kelly says hi from Houston. Sharon Walton says good evening. Patty Sirocco from New York, a former parishioner of mine um, when I was serving in New York at Resurrection um, in Hopewell Junction. It's good to see you, and it's amazing to see how, <laughs> how big your kids are getting. My goodness. Ashley is. My daughter from Indianapolis. Hey, darling, how you doing? Which means she has her husband, Jacob, right there next to her. And Greg Walker, busy day now. The Tigers getting... <laughs> busy day, now the Tigers getting the butts kicked. Hmm. Tigers. I forgot. Michigan has a baseball team. Ah. Well, yeah, I guess you could call them a baseball team. Yeah. Anyway, Priscilla, <laughs> see, I say that because I'm a Yankee fan, all right? And uh, I can do that because you guys can't talk back at me right now. <laughs> Priscilla Burns is watching with Mike. Hey, guys, good to see you. Hope you're healing up there, Priscilla. Leah Harmon is here. Hey, Leah, good to see you. So did you take your son out? No, I did not take my son out for the youth hunt. My son is a gamer and very much into IT stuff and computers. He's not really interested in anything outside, uh, especially hunting and the shooting sports. But I do have a couple of daughters that are very, in fact, they take their bows and go out in the backyard and just just shoot. Um, unfortunately, they're, the, the one that I take out hunting with me has not had her hunter safety course yet, so she couldn't go out today. But I believe next year will be her first year out. Val is watching right from here in, in in Ludington. Good to see you, Val. Good to see you. And Kathy says, good evening from the ranch now. The soup is gone. What? That, that, that's not even right. That's got to be a misprint. You mean gone after you set aside a mason jar, right? It, it must be something like that. Tracy Hughes is watching. Miss Tracy, we got something in the mail. We got an invitation in the mail. Congratulations, darling. JC is from New York as well, another former parishioner from New York, from Resurrection in Hopewell Junction. Uh, Greg Walker is evidently questioning my wisdom on the, um, the comment about the Tigers. Hmm. <laughs> Kathy, I, <laughs> Kathy is also, wanna, wanna bet, Shanky Steak. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, fine. Say what you want. Say what you want. All right. Well, it's awfully good to be with you, and thank you guys for sharing. Thank you. Tonight, what I want to talk to you about is hmm, the devotion is all about its prayer, okay, which is where we're going in our scripture tonight. We're going to be looking at Matthew uh, chapter 6 and... The verses are 7 through 15, okay? So those of you who have your Bibles along with you and you want to take a look at that and read along with, you are more than welcome to, as I 
frantically turn to the right page because usually I set this ahead of time. Matthew chapter 6, verses 7 through 15. But I want to tell you guys about the Lord's Prayer. The Lord's Prayer is so ingrained into our worship and into who we are as Christians that as a priest, I've got to tell you, there is something that is called um, unction, okay? It's, it's prayers for healing. Uh, and an anointing with oil. It is a sacrament in the Episcopal Church. Um, when it falls at the end of, of life, um, it is called extreme unction, okay? It used to have the name Last Rites, okay? Uh, we don't call it that anymore. I don't know if it was ever really officially called that, but it is the final sacrament of the church, okay? So... I guess last rites would be somewhat appropriate. Um, I got to tell you, as somebody who, um, who, I don't want to say presides over, but somebody who, who says the words of that final sacrament for people, I got to tell you, there's been a number of times that in the middle of saying extreme unction or the middle of that service, when I started reciting the Lord's Prayer, there would be somebody literally on their deathbed who hadn't talked even for a couple of days. And all of a sudden, as I'm saying the Lord's Prayer, this prayer that is so ingrained, familiar to us, so, so much a part of who we are as Christians, as followers of Christ, that they start saying the words right along with me. And it, and it is it is all inspiring at that moment to for a priest to be able to be invited into that most holy of place when somebody is transitioning from this life to the next oh my god guys it, it it'll bring you to tears every single time I've been fortunate on a number of occasions to have witnessed this firsthand. When something to us mean is, is well, so dear to us, so, so much a part of who we are, that even upon our deathbed, when we are floating in and out of consciousness, that we can still say those words, say that prayer. Well, you know there's something very powerful there. Okay? So, again, for those who uh, have their Bibles with you, uh, you want to go, Matthew chapter 6. If you don't have your Bible quite handy, don't worry. I'm going to read it right here. Okay. Chapter 6, verses 7 through 15. And when you pray, Jesus says, don't be like those people who don't know God. They continue saying things that mean nothing, thinking that God will hear them because of their many words. Don't be like them because your Father knows the things you need before you even ask. So when you pray, you should pray like this. Our Father in heaven, may your name always be kept holy. May your kingdom come and what you want be done here on earth as it is in heaven. Give us the food we need for each day. Forgive us our sins, just as we have forgiven those who sinned against us. And do not cause us to, to be tempted, but save us from the evil one. The kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours forever. Amen. Yes, if you forgive others for their sins, your Father in heaven will also forgive you of your sins. But if you don't forgive others, your Father in heaven will not forgive your sins. Mm. Those are some very, very hard words to take in, aren't they? Now, somebody once gave me a, a, a translation of that prayer that says in the middle, 
only forgive me to the amount that I am able to forgive other people. And I don't want to pray like that. My very human self wants to say, no, Lord, do a much better job at forgiving me than I am able to forgive other people because I am just stupid sometimes. And I don't forgive other people the way I ought to forgive them. It's hard work for me. It takes me some time. I may eventually get there. And more often than not, I do. But boy, do I go through a struggle until I'm there. Mm. Let's go ahead with the devotion and see what the, the devotion writer tells us about this prayer, okay? He titles the devotion, excuse me, she titles the devotion, Lord, teach us to pray. The Lord's Prayer is so familiar, we sometimes miss the details of Jesus' teaching. First, he states that our prayers need not be long. The point isn't to, quote, heap up empty phrases. And he gives us a short model of prayer. We pray not from self-focus, but as members of the human community, we say, our Father, not my Father. We honor God, whose very name is holy, whose kingdom is not just in a far-off heaven, but takes form on earth among us. God's will is done, and our needs are met by God, but God does so through us. We are called for food and other necessities, so no one goes without. The forgiveness we exchange with others is empowered by God and, based on Jesus' explanation after the prayer, is crucial to our relationship with God. Finally, we close by asking God to save us from our trials and temptations. It is less a request than a reminder to ourselves that God does indeed do so, for which we give thanks and praise. And the prayer that goes with the devotion tonight says, Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done. Amen. And the prayer concern is for all who work to supply daily bread for others. And that is a good thing to pray. And let's check in the room one more time here. Nope. I don't have any updates there, so let me get to <clears throat> our prayer list, okay? <clears throat> Excuse me. Mm, there we go. See, that helps. That helps our throat a little bit. That's good. I want to share with you a prayer request that came in today from Frank. And Frank's watching tonight, so thank you, man, for allowing me to... Uh, to bring this prayer request forward to the group. We're praying tonight for a young man, a, uh, a, a young man um, who's in the Navy, currently stationed in, in Anchorage, excuse me, stationed in Alaska. His name is Kyle. His name is Kyle Butler. He's from right here in Ludington, okay? And, um, well, Kyle was involved in a um, in an accident and he is currently in an anchorage hospital and he's in a coma i understand that kyle is married and i think i heard correctly he has two children and uh, about him through the legion um that, that gathering some funds to try to help take care of the family at this time. Um, he is in very, very critical condition. And, um, well, we just, we lift Kyle and his family in prayer. I knew about Kyle before Frank gave me this, uh, this prayer request. But the story that Frank shared speaks to this young man's character so much. 
Now, I, I don't have permission to share the whole story. Frank didn't give me that. But what I will tell you is that at a critical time in Frank's own life, this former student of his, Kyle, well, gave him the encouragement that he desperately needed on a day that he needed it the most. This young man went on in the Navy to teach in a machine shop. And, um, well, that's a testament to how much respect and honor that he gave to Frank. So thank you for us to pray with you for Kyle Butler. We also have an update on Aiden, the 16-year-old parishioner from Emmanuel who had a, an appendix burst. Uh, according to his father, who posted online, his su surgery was a success, and he's doing so well and reacting, or his, his body is reacting to the medications and the, and the surgery so well that he was due to be released today, possibly tomorrow. Um, but he's, going, he's coming home, so... That is an awesome thing. Praise God. Now he'll he'll have some recovery at home. That's a pretty serious surgery. Um, but God bless him. And uh God bless his family and taking care of him. Okay. So this being Saturday, we re generally reserve the, the last day of the week before Sunday. Um, and we reserve the part of the prayer list specifically for, for cancer patients and for people who are being treated for cancer, okay? Um, and there's one person I need to uh, go down here. There we go. So we pick up the list with Miss Leah, who's watching tonight. Her prayers for her friend Mikey, our friend Mikey, and for Rick. My, um, my friend Mike has asked prayers for his sister, Lori, out on the West Coast, and Tim, uh, president of our council at Emmanuel, he's asked for prayers, or we're joining him in prayers for praying for his brother, Mike. Sharon has asked us to join her in praying for Jim and Jack, and we're glad to do so. Chris has asked for um, prayers for Bob, Greg, our friend Randy. I've asked your prayers uh, for Helen, and I continue to ask for those. Has asked for prayers for her friend Pat, Kathy, for Joanne, and for Heidi. We pray um, with Anna and with our entire parish for Bridget and uh, Sheila. Sheila, for your cousin Daisy George. Um, and I've got a, another addition here, actually, two. Miss Barbara who normally watches us for, um, and always always greets me in the morning and I try to greet her right back. Miss Barbara, who watches from Florida, um, she and her husband were at uh, Virginia Theological Seminary. Uh, her husband was a seminarian and a retired um, judge advocate from the Air Force. And they're, they're both very good friends. Well, we're joining Barbara today and praying for a young lady by the name of Winifred. Now, I don't know if she goes by Winnie or not. I have a cousin, Winnie. Well, she's 10 years old. And she is, well, she suffers from leukemia. And she's about to go, well, she needs a second bone marrow transplant. Because the first evidently did not. Well, she is the granddaughter of their friend, Mark. Mark himself is fighting stage four. Um, kidney cancer, and he's been fighting this for almost two years now. So tonight we add Winifred, the 10-year-old, and her grandpa, Mark, and we join you in prayers for them, Barbara, okay? All right. And now we turn to the last thing that we do when we gather in, in this room well, we say the final office of the day. Um, the, the office is just a fancy church way of saying a time set aside for prayer. Okay? All right. The office is called Compline. It is the last office of the day. It comes from the Benedictine tradition of which the Episcopal Church takes a lot of its spirituality. Okay? 
our, our Compline, our Office of Compline begins with the opening sentence or the invitatory. The Lord Almighty grant us a peaceful night and a perfect end. Amen. And the psalm appointed for, t for this evening's office is Psalm 134. Behold now, bless the Lord, all you servants of the Lord, you that stand by night in the house of the Lord. Lift up your hands in the holy place and bless the Lord. The Lord who made heaven and earth bless you out of Zion. And the lesson tonight is taken from 1 Peter. Discipline yourselves. Like a roaring lion, your adversary, the devil, prowls around looking for someone to devour. Resist him, steadfast in your faith. Christ has taught us we are bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. We give you thanks, O God, for revealing your Son, Jesus Christ, to us by the light of his resurrection. Grant that as we sing your glory at the close of this day, our joy may abound in the morning as we celebrate the Paschal Mystery through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Guide us waking, O Lord, and guard us sleeping, that awake we may watch with Christ, and asleep we may rest in peace. And the canticle is from the Song of Simeon. Lord, you now have set your servant free to go in peace as you have promised. For these eyes of mine have seen the Savior, whom you have prepared for all the world to see, a light to enlighten the nations and the glory of your people Israel. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Guide us waking, O Lord, and guard us sleeping, that awake we may watch with Christ, and asleep we may rest in peace. And a morning prayer for those of you who will be joining us first thing in the morning as part of your devotion. Holy Father, thank you for loving me, for walking with me and caring about the smallest details of my life. Fill me with grace, Lord that I may have the strength to face what is before me today. I know not what today will bring forth, but make me ready, Lord, for whatever it may be. Please give me your wisdom. Fill me with your peace. May I show the same grace to others that you show to me. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. And now may the Almighty and merciful Son and Holy Spirit bless you now and always. Do one more check, see who is in the room with us here. Looks like Car I, Carolyn Fitch is with us. Hey, Carolyn. It's great to see you. Great to see you. Well, guys, that's it until tomorrow morning, um, Sunday, 930, right here on this site. We'll have our service from Emmanuel Lutheran. And then, um, then I'll be back in this form, our forum, um, on Monday night, okay? So, until then. Be well, be safe, love each other, love God with all your heart. And as the pop says, good Lord willing and the crick don't rise. I'll see you right back here tomorrow morning and then on Monday night. Until then, God bless y'all and good night, Facebook.